Music Hernandez. And I'm Happy Holly Days, Holly McClure. <laughs> and this is Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. Holly, you're still in the Christmas spirit. I'm still in the spirit and the mood. Hey, it's the one time of year I can use my name and have fun with it. So <laughs> Absolutely. Why I'm not? I'm it for all it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We have come to the last program. Today is the last program of the year. The end of the year, Isaac, and yes. it's been a great year. Thank you so much for having and inviting me on with you. It's been so much fun, and we've had a good time, haven't we? We sure have. Uh, we've done, I think, a lot of great shows. We've uh, we've attended a, a couple of great conferences, uh, and we got a lot of great things happening next year, don't we? We do. We really do. And I think we've, you know, we've gotten response back from people who have written us and told us that they've really enjoyed the show. Yeah. It's helped them determine and make a decision on what they did or didn't want to see. And so I think it's it's not only talking about doing fun things like this, but that it really has purpose. And that's yes. to help people and also see who's behind some of these movies and right. things where we're interviewing the stars and directors and producers who are making these films. Well, on that note, we should actually invite people to write us. Uh, we want to hear more from you. So l write us. Let us know you're out there. Let us know what you like about the show. Let us know. Give us some ideas, perhaps. That's right. Of what you want to hear. And in fact, this is a show since it's the end of the year. Let's mm -hmm. review 2022. Good. Let's do Good it. Idea. Let's review it. Let's talk about the top film that all America and the world actually loves. And it that's, is. That's an easy one. Top it's an Gun. Easy one. Top, Top Gun. Gun Maverick. <laughs> yeah. Top Gun Maverick. I mean, that oh. was the film that literally, I think also after COVID mm -hmm. and after poor records at the theater and box office, it showed Hollywood, oh, no, 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 people are still willing to come to a theater and support a movie. You just have to have yes. the right one. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, not only did it last for just weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks in the theater, but a theater, a theater right here close to, to where I live brought it back. I mean, after it had already been gone for a couple of months, they brought it back again. Because you know what? There's nothing like seeing this movie on the big screen. Oh, you yeah. get the whole visual effect and the feel right. of the jets and the it just it loses something yeah. on the smaller screen. It really does. Well, you know, the, yes. And I was just going to say, and why it was so popular was the patriotism. Yeah. It wasn't really strongly political. There was no huge, huge cursing in it. There was, you know, there was no sexual situation. Um, it really had that patriotic feel, that camaraderie, you know, that uh, older guy being accepted by the younger guys and vice versa. It, it, it just made people feel good about our military yes. and our country. It was pro-America. But Holly, come on, be honest. You know Tom Cruise had something to do with it for you. <laughs> that man has charm. And I tell you, he does his own stunts. He flew his own planes. In yes. fact, one of his personal planes, the smaller one, was the, at the very end of the movie uh -huh. that he went up in is, was his own plane. Wow. So he actually did his stunts. He said, I didn't want to do it with well, screens. I wanted to do the real thing. Yes. So he made sure that those flying sequences, he was really in the cockpit, and so were the guys. So it was very real. And that's part of the charm about Tom Cruise. Yes, it is. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a quick look at a trailer here so people okay. get the... I don't know that there's anybody that didn't already see the movie, but just in case, let's give them a little taste of it. Your instructor is one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. <laughs> His exploits are legendary. What he has to teach you may very well mean the difference between life and death. Your reputation precedes you. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting an invitation back. They're called orders, Maverick.
That was a great trailer. And the music. <laughs> Does the music make you excited all over again? Oh, You're like, I've, yeah, yeah. I've, I just, yeah. I'm so glad Hollywood finally put something out again that is really worth watching. Oh, my gosh. That was so good. So top film is Top Gun Maverick, top and that's gun. the top one. Now, let's talk, Let's take a look at the top Christian films. And there's a couple in this category. I, I chose one that we just interviewed the people, Isaac Alonghi mm-hmm. and his wife, um, Sandra, yes. who made the movie It's Christmas Again. And the reason I'm choosing it is because I love the fact that it's a musical combined with yes. teens, teenagers filmed in Franklin, mm-hmm. Tennessee, and Capernaum Studios. And it had the flashback to biblical days and then to the present so i really feel like it was a different kind of christmas movie not your hallmark it it really was and you know i mentioned when we had the show and we interviewed the producers uh, i mentioned that i love musicals some of my favorites of course are the music man uh, and uh, gosh what's the other one uh newsies i mean i absolutely love musicals and so that that's probably what made this one very special for me you know what how about we take a look at that trailer as well okay let's do All right, remember to watch A Christmas Carol over the holiday and write a report comparing the book to the film adaptation. Bah, humbug. I don't care what everyone is doing. Mary's the star of the show until baby Jesus comes. Nothing's gonna happen here that ain't happened before. The house is our fault. I vote we just skip Christmas this year. Will we still get presents? We can't skip Christmas. You really can't have an activity scene with only two shepherds. Look, I'm going to Max's party. But if I see a magical star on the way there, I'll follow. Jake, look up. There's a million magical stars. I can use an aspirin. A what? Those are great costumes, by the way. We don't have time to play games. I mean, that's Jesus. You know his name. We've not told anyone yet. I mean, he looks like a Jesus, doesn't he? I thought this was a dream at first, but it just feels so real. Sorry, guys, but it's just not for me. See ya! Where are all the decorations? What decorations? The Christmas lights and the trees? Those haven't been up since we were kids. What's going on? I thought Mom said she was going to decorate. Decorate what? Joe, do you want to help me bring back Christmas? Why not? Do you remember the movie The Christmas Carol? Yeah, I've seen it. You don't think anything like that could really happen, do you? So come on, let's light up the town tonight. Show the world we won't settle for what's empty this time. It's Christmas, it's Christmas again. It's Christmas, it's Christmas again. You know what really gets me excited about this too, uh, Holly, is that what? the level, the quality level of Christian films is really yes. beginning to rise, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. Isaac Alonghi is an amazing cinematographer and Sandra wrote and directed that and to direct choreography as well as, you know, the actors and there was a lot there. So I think it was, it, they stepped up the game hmm. in making this film. And I just, I thought it was really fun. I, yeah. I love how they used the Charles Dickens story <laughs> and they did it a modern version. That was really creative. So that was, that's a top one. By the way, if you want to go yeah. see it, it's not on at theaters, but if you want to go, it's Chris christmasagain.com you can stream the movie on their website it's christmas again movie i think it's christmas again movie.com christmas again movie. now movie. I, know, I know christmas is over now but that doesn't mean you can't go watch a great christmas movie i know and it's still fun <laughs> especially oh, yeah. especially for the for the next few weeks you know hey so the, the orthodox christian orthodox some of them keep celebrating christmas till january 6th there you have so it. some well, people are still celebrating christmas around the well, world well yeah well the the you know in the mexican culture we have what's called los reyes magos or the the wise men and they don't oh. come they don't come till i think it's january 12th. Oh, so, the 12 so, days of Christmas. Exactly. There you so, go. So we're still celebrating Christmas in the January. We're still <laughs> celebrating Christmas, and some people still are. It's not over yeah. yet. Now, you had one that you liked. Uh, what one your pick? I, I did. Uh, and a couple of reasons. One of them is I love true stories. I love stories about, you know, that of something that really happened. Uh, and the other one is I love movies that are made by friends of mine. And uh, this movie was made by a good friend of both of ours, uh, Kyle yes. Sailors. Uh, yes. And that's, that's the movie No Vacancy. Yes. Yeah. L- and we, love, we, yeah. Love the movie. That was a good story. And also we interviewed the actor, right? Yes. Yeah, we did. T.C. Stallings. 
Yeah. And he, and people can go look on our um, YouTube and look up that show if you want to see that, because uh, we did an interview with him and he talked about it. And it was mm-hmm. a really good interview. Another one I thought was good was Paul's Promise. And that was another true story. Yes. And again, friends of ours also directed that and worked with that. But it mm-hmm. was just a good story and, and very... Um, about the racial conflicts and and in fact there's a yeah. church standing today because of that movie right so i think people should check into seeing paul's promise as well um one of the big the successes for tv this last 2022 that really shot to a whole other level mm-hmm. is the chosen especially the chosen season three which had a yes. fathom event and broke all sorts of records at the fathom event in november and of course people continue to watch it now on the chosen app but Boy, was that a surprise. Yes, it was. And of course, we could not do this show without talking about The Chosen because uh, it, it is one of the just biggest successes out there. They showed episodes one and two of season three in theaters, and it did, I mean, it held up amazingly against all the other big Hollywood movies that came out. Yeah, I think it was $10 million opening. It came in, I think, number two or three at the box we, office that week. And it, it, it ended up in number three that week. But we're talking that about week. major, major films. Yeah. In fact, it beat out another major She Said film yes. that they were hoping yes. would do big numbers. And it beat that out completely. And yes. the thing that I feel like it's getting a lot of flack, isn't it, Isaac? It's Or some flack, anyway. Oh, and from see. naysayers and people, which, you know, sadly, in the Christian realm, there's always going to be people that don't agree with what you're doing. There's people that don't agree with what we say on our show. You know, so there's always going to be the naysayers. But you I don't just, know. I, just, I feel like they're picking on them. You just had to get me started, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, see, <laughs> I, I I keep up with uh, Facebook a lot. I'm, I'm on Facebook all the time, just seeing what people are thinking, what they're saying. And it's been very disappointing to me to see people come against uh, the chosen um, f- from several from several points. One of them that really irks me is that they talk about the fact that he's partnered with a company that is owned by Mormons. OK. okay. And so they say, oh, that and, and they. They say that he's they they're saying that that he that the the chosen is evil. That's that's those are big, strong words. And and it just reminds me of that scripture in Isaiah that says, whoa, judgment is coming to those that call good evil. Hmm. I, I would say be real. And God careful. also says, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. You know, if, and, and, and this this show is truly very, anointed. Now, very let me, anointed. Let me clarify one thing. Angel mm-hmm. Studios, which is Mormon, it's in Utah, helped them raise funds for the first yes. season. Once they raise funding for the first season, they switch their format to a pay it forward format. And that pay it forward format is the Chosen's Thank own you. format. Correct. So it's not relying on they, any Mormon funding or Mormon foundation. They're and just distributing it. They're just distributing it. Hey. You know, and and, the, and then secondly, um, the they have they seek out and have so much counsel on their scripts mm. to make sure that their scripture yes they're taking liberties with characters yes i mean you have to they're, it's not a biblical based story i mean biblical um, right. what am i trying to say exact bible script it's based on the new testament well, based on the characters and so they're taking liberties yeah well you know one of the one of the other complaints was that they feel that he's that that, that uh, the chosen is making jesus very human. They're showing his humanity. And wasn't he? <laughs> uh, you know, as far as I know, he was 100% divine wasn't and, 100, he? and 100% human. Now, I know mathematically that doesn't make sense to 100%, but in the divine it does. He was 100% divine and he was 100% human. Now, there, I actually uh, wrote down a couple of, a few scriptures here that talk about that, that prove that. For instance, in Matthew 125, it says that he experienced hunger. As far as I know, that's a human trait. Okay, you right. experience hunger. Uh, the other one is Matthew twenty one eighteen says that he also experienced thirst. Now, there's the living water where if you drink that, you'll never thirst again. That's on the divine side. But on H two O water, uh, you're going to get thirsty again. And he experienced right. thirst, which means right. again he was human. Uh, in Matthew four one it says that he experienced pain and suffering, and that's very important because. That's what I think makes the sacrifice of, of the crucifixion so special. If he was just 100% divine and didn't feel pain and had come in, right. we, we would have said, ah, so he died on the cross, but no big deal. He didn't feel anything. He was divine, but he wasn't. He became human so that he would take our place and pay the price for us. So he was human in that case. And of course, at the end, Matthew 16, 21, he died. The divine right. Don't die. The human dies. So he was human. So to show him in his humanity, 
I don't think is a problem. To me, I think it's wonderful. It, it makes me love him even more. Which also he died, but then he rose again, which was the humanity. That's and the divine, the divine part. And then the divine. And also he was born of a virgin birth, which is half human, half divine, because he was born of the virgin birth, Holy Spirit. Well, so, and then they're trying to say that because the line that he said, we'll have to go to the law of Moses. And he said, I am the law of Moses. And they're arguing that that is a Mormon line. I'm sorry. It is in the Bible. It is biblical that he did come to fulfill the law of Moses. I mean, you know, people get nitpicky about the, the weirdest things. I think I mentioned, too, if you go on the Chosen site, website, they have different little films that you can watch besides the Chosen. And there's one where they took a group of teenagers that were from all faiths, all backgrounds, all different cities, all races, and they put them in this room. They actually paid for them to come out, and they didn't mm -hmm. know what they were going to watch. They didn't know what they were going to see. Some of them thought it was going to be The Bachelor. Some of them thought it was going to be other things. And they had him watch The Chosen. And then they would film them, their comments and what their reactions, and through the course of it. And then after they followed up on a couple of people and to watch those young people yeah. who many of them said, man, I don't really believe in the Bible. I don't really believe in God. One guy said, I believe in many gods. And to watch that transformation by the end of just watching yeah. season one. And it shows, yes, that's what appeals to those kids is the humanity. That's what they commented on. Exactly. They, that for the first time, Jesus was real to them yeah. for the first time. Yep. So, so I agree. It's that is the importance of it. Well, I, I probably better stop thinking about it right now because I my blood pressure starts to go up <laughs> and I, I'm going to have to go take an extra pill. And, and I'll tell you another line where Jesus calls Mary by name. I have so many people at mm -hmm. Capernaum Studios because in season one, when she's walking out of the pub and she has the name Lilith and he says Mary and she knows nobody knows that name. And she turns around and he says, you know, God has called you by your name. You know, you are his, you know, da, da, da. More people tell me they react to that. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, it, it that yes, it's in the Bible, but he made it come alive. You know, the guy who plays Jonathan, who plays yeah. him, made that come alive and and makes you feel what Jesus would have felt like. So I know yeah. we are for it. And I'm sorry, not no matter what you say, that we don't listen to naysayers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, remember, it's a TV show. It's a TV okay? show. It's, it doesn't. He, Dallas never said, hey, throw away your Bible and use this. Never. Instead. It's a never. TV show. It's a show. And, and a speaking show. of shows, speaking of shows in Hollywood, boy, was there some turnovers this last year. Ooh, yeah. Wh what are we talking about? We are talking <laughs> big, big elephant, the 900, the 800 pound uh, dumbbell, dumbbell elephant in the room, which is Disney. I mean, talk about at the beginning of the year and, you know, DeSantis and attacking yeah. him and thinking they were getting political and also cool and also woke. And then in the course of it, people went, yeah, OK, no, I'm pulling my stocks. I'm not uh, watching Disney. We're pulling Disney Plus. We're not going to go to your movies light year. We are going to rebel against that. We're going to rebel against the what was a strange land or something. Yeah. They've lost millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, you know, I think Hollywood thinks of us Christians as just a little side group over here that doesn't really right. matter. They don't realize we're actually a huge and powerful uh, bunch of people. We're a majority. They yes, think we're we a minority. They mm -hmm. think their thinking and their woke mentality is the majority. It is not. And it's been proven now by everything that's happened. Whether it was, Literally, they took on uh, Bob Iger, took over uh, Bob Chappick, um, is as the CEO and founder because the guy that was doing all the political stuff got booted out and it's still not okay with Disney. They're still doing stuff at the park. They're still changing pronouns and taking yeah. out things. I, I think the effect is going to keep on going. Well, and I think maybe it needed to get to this point of what they're doing because yes. I think us Christians were becoming a little too complacent and we were allowing the smaller stuff, let's say, to just sneak in and we, yes. were, you know, we were okay with it. And it took something that just became really too much for us to finally go, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we can't, we can't go there, there anymore. We can't go that far. So it woke us up. In 2020, yeah, woke, their wokeness woke us up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 2022 became really a year where yeah. Christians started voting with their ticket stubs mm -hmm. and with their uh, money for taking, pulling, like I said, Disney yeah. Plus, and they felt it. The message was loud and clear. They're feeling it. It still is happening. They're still, yeah. Their stock now has gone down. I guess Avatar, which we're going to talk about, Avatar, yeah. they were expecting to do a lot bigger. I think it brought in 440-something million around worldwide so far. Mm -hmm. But they were thinking it was going to be beyond that, and it's not. And so now they're panicking once again because their stocks have gone down. Right. I'm telling you, if, if they were only spiritual, they would understand this is spiritual retribution for what they've done and what they've attacked. But they don't, so they're just have to learn a lesson and i hope they do I, i'm sorry i don't yeah. feel sorry for well 
You know, I just thought of something that maybe, again, it's, it's a great thing that this is happening because maybe us as Christians can begin to divert our investments because we, yes. a lot of Christians invest in all these companies. Maybe we can start diverting our investments over towards the Christian side of filmmaking. Then we can make films at that avatar level. Yes. Uh, mm. Mm, something to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think we are getting better and better, but I wish that we ha- we don't have the studio there's, behind us. Yeah, and there's we still the financial stu- part. It's, it's the money, yeah. and it's the money to get funding to be able to do the bigger projects. Right. I mean, he uh, spent three um, uh, spent th- Cameron spent three hundred and fifty million dollars. Wow, three hundred and fifty million dollars on Avatar. Now, of wow. course, he's he's continued to do part of three and part of four because, mm-hmm. as he put it, you know the show Stranger Things. He said he didn't want the Stranger Things effect where they wait a year and the kids grow up and then you can do a show. They wait another year and the kids even look older. So now you're trying to yeah. see their high school and they look like they're 20. Right. So, you know, he he went ahead and was smart and filmed Avatar 2 and part of 3 and 4, which they'll release next year, okay. so that the kids would stay the same age group. So it's not 350 for just one film. However, that's a lot of money they spent and Disney's kind of panicking. Because uh, they're, they're, it's not doing what they thought it was going to do. I, I imagine so. Now, you do have a review of that, uh, of Avatar, right? You went to see it. I do. I have a review. Yeah. And it's Avatar The Way of the Water is what it's called. Mm-hmm. And uh, it takes place 15 years after and it uh, the original Avatar. Sam Worthington is Jake. And Zoe Saldana is, of course, mm-hmm. um, uh, Net, netri, 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 sorry, I'm going to put my glasses on so I can, <laughs> Netiri, sorry, I'll be saying it wrong, Netiri, but um, they're the Navi people, and the reason I wanted to put my glasses on, because I want to make sure I catch the people that also start in it, sure. um, they terrorize Jake, and, and the, what's funny and interesting is, th- they have made now Navi blue looking avatars of the bad guys, and remember the bad guy was killed in Avatar, well guess what, they took his DNA and they create a uh, Navi uh, giant thing, so that those Navi military can fight and sneak in and kill the Navi people. So it's even more diabolical. They attack the forest. They attack those people. So they have to run and flee with their kids. They now have four kids and they have to flee to the water. And it's another clan. They have um, fin like tails. They have flippers with the hands and uh, the human tech gets worse. Then Quarch is ahead of all those soldiers attacks even more. Sigourney Weaver is back in this one in a different Ooh. avatar, which is like a younger girl avatar. Stephen Lang, of course, is is the bad guy, the big colonel. Kate Winslet is actually in this, which I think it's funny mm. because Kate Winslet was in what? Titanic. Titanic. So she's joined again, James Cameron, and he has Kate Winslet back. Wow. And then uh, Cliff Curtis. And Cliff Curtis, we, he started a bunch of things. He's another, he plays a voice. Now, Paris, this is a hard PG-13. And it's hard for language. It's got, you know, uh, military style battle scenes. It's got fighting, um, sword arrows. So, you know, now PG-13, it's not a big deal, but a seven-year-old, I don't know. I yeah. I was, Isaac, I was in there and I see people with three and five and six-year-olds in this movie. And I'm like, what are you thinking? This is not like PG family friendly, you know, to come to as a PG-13 and it's a hard PG-13. Um I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I thought it was creative. I mean, the special effects, the, the water scenes, the way they they breathe underwater, and they had right. to film these kids underwater. It is worth the ticket, the price of the ticket. The imaginary blue world, the water, it's, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Well, let's take a look at the trailer. Okay, let's do it.
Now, James Cameron produced, directed, and co-wrote the script, okay? Mm -hmm. The thing I loved about it was what you just heard. He talks about the importance of fatherhood all the way through. He's like, I'm a father. I have to take care of my family. The importance of family, the importance of sticking together. Mm -hmm. The kids disrespect their parents at one point and apologize to their parents because they realize they did wrong. The father apologizes to the kid when he realizes he perceives something. All of that I loved. What I didn't love was the foul language. And on a, and this is the thing. This is so typical Cameron. This is what he did in Titanic. He had characters cursing that never would have cursed, never mm-hmm. would have used that language at that time. You have people on, on Pandora, a whole different planet. They worship the god Navri. It's a, uh, Iwa, Iwa. It's a whole different god that they worship. And they're very spiritually connected. So why do you have characters yeah. You know, why aren't they cursing that God? Why aren't they cursing Ewa, that God on that planet? Oh, <laughs> right. because it's not spiritually correct. Yeah. Well, it's okay then to use GD and to use Jesus and to use that language. And that's the only thing that ruined it for me and made for others. It's mm-hmm. a good movie. I don't want to ruin the whole thing, but I will warn you that that's in there. And it just makes me so mad that Hollywood thinks they can't bash, yeah. you know, Muhammad. They can't do anybody else, but boy, they can do Jesus and God all over. And it's an age old discussion, but that's the part well, that bothered me. Again, it's up to us to make changes uh, by right. not uh, not spending our money there. Well, or spending it, way, it but... in, or spending it and voicing complaint because it is a good, or, yeah. good story. That's, and, yeah, and, that's what's and sad. This is, and this is the thing. It is PG-13. So parents, just please heed the rating. Yeah. Choose your movies wisely. There you go. I was waiting <laughs> for that line. Holly, we have come to the end of this show and yes, to the end of this year. <laughs> Oh, happy new year, happy Isaac. Happy new year. Uh, we may have a new year's program. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I think hopefully we will have one right on new year's. And so then that's when our whole new year will start. How's that? We're going to kick it off right, aren't we? Well, yes, I'll, absolutely. This absolutely. has been fun wrapping up 2022. And now we get to see what's coming in 2022. Yes, it has. And don't forget to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Please. Uh, hit that little subscribe button, and there you'll be able to watch some of the shows that we talked about today, where we interviewed the people that uh, you know that produced the movies that we talked about on the show today. So, That's uh, right. Holly, there you go. You That's it. it. We're done. Click subscribe because we need to get you to do it on on our YouTube. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for watching Faith on Film. Isaac, thanks for having me co-host, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.